Hello. How are you doing? Great. All good. Pizzas are great? Right? Okay, so um, tonight we're going to talk about um, DevOps. We're going to talk about IC. We're going to talk about CI, CD. And before we go to uh, the sessions, um, how many of you already implement DevOps here? Cool. How many of you already using CDK or AWS CDK? Nice. The lesser, the better. So okay. So uh, today we're going to talk about um, CI, CD, uh, and also uh, CDK and how to integrate all of them. Uh, these are the two uh, main pillars in DevOps, and and I'm hoping that I can give you some like a, a guidance on how to use AWS tools, which is AWS CDK, to integrate uh, between these uh, ISC and CI/CD. Uh, my name is Donny Prakoso. I am a senior developer advocate covering for ASEAN and also AEM. Um, I have 17 years each experience on um, technology. Uh, I started as a software engineer and then uh, R&D and then um, SysOps as well. So DevOps is something that really close to my heart because I've been doing that for years. And I'm super excited to share with you uh, about AWS CDK and implementation uh, for CICD and ISC. And I love copy or coffee. So if you want to uh, have a discussion with me about modern application development, serverless or containers, and I specialize on microservices, just um, text me any uh, a message on Twitter, LinkedIn, or GitHub, or even YouTube, uh, and then we can have a nice copy discussion together. So this is the key takeaways uh, for this session. So I'm hoping that uh, after this session, you understand how DevOps can enable you to improve uh, development velocity uh, by implementing IAC and also uh, CI/CD, and how to integrate with AWS CDK. And this is what we're going to deploy today. So obviously, I'm not going to build this from scratch. I have everything ready on my laptop, but this is the architecture. We're going to deploy a serverless API. This is a simple REST API. Uh, we, have, we have four AWS Lambda functions, everything centralized within a Amazon API Gateway, and everything, um, all the AWS Lambda functions also integrate with Amazon DynamoDB. Okay, so um, now let me ask you a question. How many of you still provisioning the infrastructure through the console? One, two. You, Steve? OK. OK, so I'm hoping that after this session, you can start using AWS CDK. Uh, the reason why this is something that I would um, not advise to uh, create your infrastructure through the console, because you cannot have a predictable and repeatable uh, architecture. So that's, that's the, the idea of IC. But first of all, let's talk about DevOps. So um, throughout my engagement uh, across ASEAN and AEM, uh, this is the very first question when I talk about DevOps is uh, coming from developers. Uh, what is actually DevOps? So in a nutshell, DevOps is actually a combination of three elements. It's uh, tools, it's practices, and culture. And what makes DevOps really interesting is that each organization, they have different approach on building stuff. They have different um, mechanism on how to deliver applications from uh, development to staging to UAT to production, uh, and also um, the the like a lot of organization they also comes with tools. Uh, they also comes with tools uh, at AWS. We have uh, pillars from microservices, uh, CI/CD, and then ISC and monitoring and observability. Uh, another another organization they probably have a different pillars on DevOps, but in a nutshell, it's a combination of three components. Now, the reason why recently, in the recent years, uh, DevOps becoming more popular is that with DevOps, um, a lot of organizations, they uh, gain more benefits from uh, practicing DevOps. So um, me. So they have benefits from having uh, more frequent on deployment, from weekly, uh, from monthly uh, to hourly or daily. They have lesser change lead time from one to six months. They can reduce it down to one to seven days. 
And, um, and also the change failure rate are from 46 to 60% to 0 to 15%. And this is awesome. Why? Because it makes organization be more agile on delivering applications and give values to your customers. So this is awesome. But the problem is, in reality, not everyone moved to DevOps already. So this is something that I would like to elaborate why. Uh, why hasn't everyone already moved to DevOps if the benefits are really that good? Right. So the first problem that, uh, and these are the uh, compilation or all feedback I got from developers. So the first problem is that it's too difficult to get started. Right. So because um, there are so many tools, there are so many theory behind the DevOps. And then um, they need to use different tools that are not designed to seamlessly integrate from one to another. And then the another problem is that they need is is they don't have any like centralized uh, oversight from all of these tools. And also, uh, it also requires some sort of expertise to actually implement DevOps with best practices. And above of all, like it's just too much for developers, for builders, for CFSOPs to get started with DevOps, because it's just too many stuff that they need to learn at once. Right. Now, in this session, I want to share with you two pillars in DevOps. The first one is IAC, Infrastructure as Code. The other one is CI/CD. And, and also, I want to show you how to integrate these two. Now, let's first talk about IAC. Now, when we build applications, we usually juggle with all the codes, all the configurations. And the, uh, the principal notion of infrastructure as code is that we should treat infrastructure the same we treat codes. Like, for example, uh, if we want to have our applications uh, behave, um, I mean, they behave same in any kind of different environments, we expect the same for our infrastructure. Now, the reason why is because all applications, they need to have an infrastructure. But that's not only infrastructure that we are going to deploy with ISE, but also architecture. And this is something that we uh, often overlook, that we just focus on infrastructure. We tend to forget about the architecture. So, and then the second um, key reason why we need to uh, implement ISE is that we could have a release infrastructure change using the same tools as the code changes. And then lastly, this is something that I really like, is that we can replicate production environment in staging environments to enable continuous testing. So this is aligned with, if you ever heard about 12 Factors app? Anyone here ever hear about, yep, cool. So we have that one factor to uh, build, release, and run. And then also dev prod parity that we try to minimize the, uh, the difference between environment. Why? Because that's, that's important. If we cannot replicate the issue in the production environment, we cannot replicate the same on the staging environment. Right. So this is really uh, one cool uh, technology, and that is AWS CDK. And I need to share with you that AWS CDK is not the only tool. Um, in the past, we usually use um, best script. How many of you have used Bash Script to uh, professional infrastructure? One, two, see. And then we move on to probably you ever heard about Ansible, right? And then Chef and a Puppet. And then um, the evolution goes uh, to some kind of abstraction. Like we had Pulumi, we had Troposphere. And then at the end now, we have AWS CDK. Now, what makes AWS CDK is really cool is that you can code your infrastructure in programming languages. So in the past, we, I mean, up until now, we can configure our infrastructure using uh, declarative syntax like YAML, right? like, like JSON as well. But with AWS CDK, you now can actually code using your preferred programming language. You can code on TypeScript. You can code on Python. We, you can code on um, what else? JavaScript. And Golang is also in preview. So this minimizes the friction when you code your applications, and then you want to code your infrastructure. In your infrastructure, 
you, you, you don't need to switch context because everything is there in your IDE. Right? So this is one of the super cool tool to implement IC. Now, and one uh, key concept in CDK is construct. Now, um, how many of you already use AWS Cloud Formation? Right. So, Cloud Formation, uh, you can create a construct uh, using L1 using AWS CDK. This is a low level. What you see, what you have. What you see on the cloud formation, you can also create on AWS CDK using L1 construct. Now, L2 construct is about abstraction. If you want to create AWS Lambda, if you want to create Amazon DynamoDB, you can easily create by instantiating uh, an object, and then you can create your own resources. Now, L3 is more abstracted layer, and this is something like if you want to create um, um, some kind like a containers using AWS Fargate integrated with application load balancers, you're going to need to use L3+. And uh, in my experience, I usually uh, just go with uh, L2 construct, and sometimes I go to L1, but if I want to have more like an opinionated um, uh, infrastructure and architecture, uh, I usually go to L3. So that's the way it works on AWS CDK. Now, another important part when it comes to uh, tools is that it's not how we adjust ourselves to use the tools. It's how the tools adjust our workflow. And this is something that I really appreciate uh, from AWS CDK, that it really doesn't obstruct or change your workflow. It's as simple as that you need to create your code, and then you need to build it. If you use like um, TypeScript or JavaScript, you can just npm run build. And then you can go uh, directly to CDK deploy if you want to deploy directly into your AWS account. You can also uh, check any kind of changes from current state to the previous state by using CDK diff. And you can also generate call formation template by using CDK synth. So this is really a versatile tool, and um, hopefully it fits into your workflow. Right. So I'm going to show you how that you can uh, code your architecture and infrastructure using AWS CDK um, by implementing this serverless API. OK. Um, can you see it? Oh, no, you kind of. Yes. Can we mirror it? Uh, I mean, you, you, sure. I mean, it will, it will be fine with mirroring it. OK. Can you see it now? OK, cool. It's the code. Yeah, I'm going to zoom in. Um, right, it doesn't look good. Right, so this is how CDK codes looks like. Uh, it's written on Python, uh, but you can also uh, try to program your CDK in other, in other languages. Uh, this is just one example. And the first thing that you will need to, uh, because we're going to implement, right, we're going to implement, let me swap it again. How do you look like now? Okay. So because we're going to implement the serverless API, we need, uh, first of all, is Amazon DynamoDB, right? 
And then the other components is four sets of AWS Lambda. And then lastly, we need to have Amazon API Gateway. But we also need somewhere in between, and that is IAM permission. So we're going to configure all of that in AWS CDK. Okay. Your code is called Right, so. Right, so um, the first one, the first thing that we need to define is DynamoDB table. And this is how you define the DynamoDB table. This, in, in these lines, I define a DynamoDB table with table name this. I have a stack prefix over here. It's just a, like an ID. And then I define the partition key. I use ID and attribute type is string. And then for this DynamoDB, I also set the removal policy, which means that once that I don't no longer need this, um, this, this architecture, this system, I can easily remove everything. I need to mention that this is not for production use. This is only for demo. And then I also define the read capacity and also write capacity. Right? And this is amazing because everything that you see on the console, you can program them on AWS CDK directly by using this object. And you can define all the properties that you need. And it's not only this. You can also configure auto scaling. You can also configure the uh, DynamoDB streams if you want to trigger directly into AWS Lambda function. So everything that you see on the uh, documentation, you can also program on AWS CDK. Now, the next thing that I, I need to do is to define the IAM role. Obviously, that I need to uh, give the permissions to the principal uh, permissions to lambda.amazonaws.com. And then I define these permissions to create a logs group on Amazon CloudWatch. Why? Because obviously our AWS Lambda needs to have an access to CloudWatch logs. Right. Now, the next thing that I need to define is the access to DynamoDB. Now, you can see that. Here we have granular control on what are the things that you want to give an access to your um, AWS Lambda. It's not only AWS Lambda. If you are running containers using Fargate or using EC2, you can also define the task role uh, using this approach. This is called less privilege, means that I'm not going to give all the permissions, only the permissions that I do think that this application needs to access, and that is to connect and integrate with DynamoDB. Now, the next question is that, uh, do we need to like, guess um, all, the, um, uh, all the actions that we need to give to our Lambda or Fargate or our services? No. There, there's an, actually an easy way to do this is by uh, running DynamoDB calling uh, by using grand read. Like, for example, And then you can just give grant read to your AWS Lambda. That's it. But this is the way I like to configure my IAM role, simply because I have full control on what I want to AWS Lambda access. Now, the next component that I need to define is AWS Lambda itself. Here, I define the first, the first thing is the code. Now, the next question is, where is the code? The code is actually here in my IDE. So if I just go to uh, this, um, this folder, I have all the uh, AWS Lambda functions. And this is what I meant by using AWS CDK. It minimizes the friction for you to switch contacts from uh, defining your architecture and programming your application. Now, I, here, um, this is just the usual properties uh, on AWS Lambda, like timeout and then the role itself, and then uh, enabling the tracing. This is integration with AWS X-Ray. So you don't need to do that manually. Everything is already configured here. And then I define the runtime here, uh, Lambda runtime pattern 3.8. And you can also integrate with AWS Lambda layers. That's something that probably we can discuss, and it deserves another session. But essentially, AWS Lambda layers is like a library that you can integrate nicely with any kind of AWS Lambda functions. So what I, like what I said before, that anything that you have 
or you can see or you can configure an AWS Lambda console and AWS Cloud Formation, you can actually do it uh, with AWS CDK. And then, um, but when my AWS Lambda receives requests, HTTP requests, it needs to save or it needs to look up into DynamoDB table. Now, the, ne the next question is that how that I can pass the DynamoDB table name from my AWS CDK to AWS Lambda? We can do that by adding environment variables. And this is defined here. Uh, simply just call add environment uh, table name and then uh, reference to the previous object, which is DDB table, table name, and then we can have it on AWS Lambda function. The same things for other AWS Lambda functions on list data, uh, get data, and delete data. Now, the last element that we need to create is the Amazon API gateway. Right, so uh, here I uh, implement the minimum uh, requirements of REST API. Uh, I'm u utilizing the STP protocol. And the first thing that I need to do is this to create an API object. Uh, here I have this REST API. This is, this is already on AWS CDK, so you don't need to create uh, from scratch. And then I need to define the integration for our AWS Lambda function. And then I add resource. So I add resource data. That means that when the API gateway created, I can access the endpoint and this AWS Lambda function by adding slash data. And then uh, for slash data, I want to define two uh, methods, which is post and get. Uh, post is to save data, and get is to list data. Right. And then I also want to um, um, look up by ID, by the data ID. I can easily do that by uh, using this directive, and then add method, and then uh, forget, and also delete. Right. Now, the rest is just the output. I want to see the table name of DynamoDB and also the URL of Amazon API Gateway once CDK finished processing. And then lastly, I just define the, um, the core applications. I define the stack and then uh, give some text and that's it. Right. Now, let's try to run this. Um, let me try. So I mentioned that you, the, the AWS CDK, you can generate CloudFormation template. And you can do that by running CDK synth. And this is what it looks like. I know it's quite, it's quite long. Right, so all of these are the lines of CloudFormation that you can actually pipe it out into a file and then you can just plug it into CloudFormation and it's going to deploy your uh, your architecture, right? So, and imagine that we can easily program all of this without having to learn uh, the AWS Cloud Formation right from AWS CDK. And when talking about the deployment, with AWS CDK, you can actually just deploy it by running CDK deploy. And this is amazing. Why? Because it minimizes the friction from uh, for us to deliver the architecture from our development to production or, an, or any kind of environment. And here I have this API gateway, uh, sorry, the API endpoint here. And if I test it out, slash data, I have two data already on my DynamoDB. Now, what happens if I want to uh, add more data? Oops, where is it? Oops, sorry. My bad. Oops, this is something wrong. Right, so something is wrong here, uh, but I assure you, it's actually working. I think it's somewhere here. Oops. Yeah, 
And yes, success. And if we go uh, list down the, uh, the data again by calling this um, data. Mm. We can see a new record already insert into DynamoDB. Right. So it, it is that easy now to provision infrastructure, configure the integration, make an architecture, even to deploy your codes if you use AWS Lambda functions, or even if you have a containers running on Fargate, you can do that everything on AWS CDK. Okay. So yeah. So that is the first demo, and is this the right screen? Right. OK, so moving on. Now, we have covered about ISC. What you just seen was ISC. It's infrastructure as code. That we treat architecture uh, the same way that we treat codes. But still, the way that you, you saw that when I wanted to deploy my applications into my account, I need to run CDK deploy. Right. What I need is actually when I push my codes into a Git repository, it will uh, um, trigger an automatic process to deploy directly to any environments that I have. But it's not only any environments. There are a couple of steps or processes that we need to do before then. So, and this is where we come to the CI/CD. So in CI/CD, we know there are a couple of stages. This is called as release process stages. Um, this is the minimum stages. Uh, we, first of all, we have source. When we check in source uh, from our Git repository, and then we build the source, we compile the code, we do the unit testing, checking, and if you are running on containers, you need to create containers, you need to do the um, Docker build, you need to uh, push it to the um, image repository as well. And then moving on to the next stage is integration testing. Like, uh, we, need to, we need to do a lot of testing over there, load testing, UI testing, security testing, anything, uh, any testing, you just name it. And last stage is deployment. We need to deploy the applications to any kind of environments. It's not strictly only for one environment, but if you have like a UAT, you have staging, you have a client staging, we need to be able to deploy to those environments as well. But now, um, Sorry, this one. Okay, so um, these are the release process stages, and how does it relevant to CI/CD? So there are three um, in in CI/CD. Although it looks like only like a two stuff in that acronym, CI and CD. Actually, it has three kind of definition. CI stands for continuous integration. CD stands for continuous delivery and continuous deployment. So continuous integration is as simple as that we have this automated mechanism to get the source of our codes and build it as an artifact. Right. So this artifact is the one that we're going to deploy. Now, continuous delivery is where we, um, we get the source. We have a mechanism to get the source. And then we build the, uh, the source becoming an artifact we test the artifact, and we, before we do the deployment, it needs to have a manual approval. Continuous deployment is like an automated process. Right. And uh, I've seen a lot of developers, they use uh, continuous deployment. I also knew some developers who use continuous delivery. But the, the most common question asked uh, to me whether I need to use continuous deployment or continuous delivery. Um, my answer is that if you can rely on testing, if you can rely on integration testing, security testing, load testing, unit testing, then go ahead with continuous deployment. Means that when you push your codes into Git repository, it going automatically deploy to any kind of environments. But, but in some cases, um, we also need to have an approval before we can deploy. Sometimes that needs to have, we need to have an approval from other business team or other departments, and that's when you need to implement continuous delivery. So what happens in continuous delivery is that before it goes to deployment mode to any kind of environments, somebody needs to click approve, provide reasons, and then it's going to deploy to the environments. So that's, uh, in short, that is the definition of uh, the CI/CD. Right. 
And then the next question is that what, can, uh, what are the AWS services we can use to implement this? Uh, the first, um, uh, to be honest with you, there are a lot of tools that you can use. You can use Jenkins. Uh, you can use Travis. You can also use GitHub Action. And, um, but my preference is AWS Code Pipeline. Not because I work for AWS, no. Because that AWS Code Pipeline, probably 30% of it, yes. Uh, but AWS Code Pipeline is super simple. Now, the problem that lies on implementing DevOps is not the tools is complicated. But our perspective is too complicated that makes it hard for us to implement DevOps. With code pipeline, it's super easy. Let me show you a sneak peek to the next demo. Is it the right one? Is that the right one? Is it the right one? OK, cool. So this is the right screen. This is what AWS Code Pipeline looks like. You have the flexibility to define all the stages here. Here I define four stages. Sorry, it's actually more than four stages uh, because this is um, the deployment from AWS CDK. But essentially, we have source to get it from my Git repository. We have build to build the application. And we have uh, testing here inside the staging. And this is super simple because what we need is that we need to ship our codes into the production. So it can deliver value to our customers. That's it. And this is why I love AWS Code Pipeline. And, right. and the other uh, service that you can use is AWS Code Build. Uh, oh, my slide again. Right. Uh, this is the right slide. Uh, presenter view. Presenter view. This is the right one. Uh, I mean, the, the, the slides is not uh, full screen. Right. Uh, so presenter view. Okay, so um, let's use another method. Oh, by the way, uh, all these materials, including the presentation and codes, is available on GitHub. I'm going to send you the link. Okay. All good then? Yeah. Right, okay, so apology for that. Another surface that you can use uh, is AWS Code Build. So the uh, um, AWS Code Build is with, with AWS Code Build that you can easily have on a machine to build your applications. So in the past, we usually need to have a dedicated machines to build our application. But with Code Build, is everything is fully managed. And the beauty of having AWS Code Build is that you can integrate with AWS Code Pipeline. So anyone here use um, GitLab Runner? Right, so that runner is actually uh, something that you can use uh, with AWS Code Build. So AWS Code Build is a fully managed uh, build system uh, that could help you to uh, build your applications by running the script. Right. So the next demo uh, that I'm going to show you is how to implement CI/CD with CDK pipelines. Now I mentioned about CDK has a construct; it has a three-level construct, and CDK pipelines is level three construct. And what it does is it is actually create you, help you to create a release pipeline using AWS Code Pipeline and AWS Code Build. So what we're going to do is we're going to implement CI/CD with AWS Code Build. Sorry, with AWS CDK. Um, right. So. Um, here is the AWS uh, CDK code. I, here I define a pipeline stack. Yeah. And then he, above this line, I also define the account ID and the region. 
And why I need to define this? Because with AWS CDK pipelines, you can actually deploy uh, to multi accounts. So like for example, you have one account for your staging and another account for production. You can deploy it to multi accounts. And you can also deploy multi region. So this is something that you can do with uh, CDK pipelines. Now, the next thing that I need to do is that I need to define the pipeline stack. So the pipeline stack is really an, uh, quite straightforward. That we need to create a code pipeline here. And then we define the steps that we need to uh, in our release pipeline. So here I define shell step. There are two kinds of steps that you can do with CDK pipelines. There are build step and shell step. Shell step, in a nutshell, is just that you can run shell script commands uh, in your building stage. And here, I define the input. My, uh, this is ID where I define the Git repository. And then I choose the branch, which is the main branch here. And then I define the GitHub connection error end. Now, the, now, you're probably asking, how can we integrate our Git repository with CDK pipelines? Now, this is the answer by defining the connection ARN. And there are various ways on doing this. You can try to uh, store your GitHub token. If you use GitHub, you can uh, get the token. Or you can just create a connection using uh, AWS developer tools. Here, connection. Is it too small? A little bit small. You can just create a connection. And then uh, it uh, integrates with Bitbucket and GitHub. And then, yeah, you can just finish the wizards. And then uh, at the end, you're going to have the results like this, like GitHub connection. And this is something that I really like. Why? Uh, instead of using GitHub token, the first thing is that I don't like to store token anywhere else. Uh, and the other one is that with, GitHub with the developer tools connection, I can reuse the connection. So not only I can use it on CDK, but I can use it to uh, uh, another tools within AWS ecosystem. Cool. So uh, next one is the command. This is basically the command that I need to build the application. So if you see on my GitHub repo, uh, demo number two, here, this is the GitHub repo. And the, another beauty of CDK pipelines is that you can define uh, the source folder. So regardless you are using mono repo or using multi repo or using Git sub modules, you can define the, uh, um, the repo that you want to deploy by defining it here on the comments. And then I install uh, AWS CDK. And then I install all the requirements. And then I do CDK synth here. And then CDK scene, we're going to uh, create the uh, cloud formation templates here. And then it's going to deploy. And I can also define the stage, which is the stage here is staging. And that's it. This is CDK pipelines. And at the end, when I deploy this application, uh, CDK application, this is what I have. I have source, I have build, I have update pipeline, I have assets, and staging. That's it. Now. The uh, next demo that I want to show it to you is that, OK, so that's all good, but that is a continuous deployment. I don't want to do continuous deployment for my application. How can I implement continuous delivery by having a manual approval before I deploy my application? And this is the next demo. Uh, so we're going to create um, two stages, a st uh, test a staging and also production. But before the uh, application can deploy to production, it needs to be manually approved. And then I also add some kind of testing, integration testing on the staging uh, stage. So the way it works is that uh, similar, to the, um, similar to the previous demo, here I have, this is the serverless API, uh, the same code that I used for the first demo. And to add stage, you can just create uh, another like this. You can just create like a, another stage, uh, which is I called as production. 
and then I, I add stitch here, and then I add the pre-activities, which is a manual approval step, and I call it as deploy to production. Okay, so let's try to deploy this. Right, so it's going to deploy the CDK application. So meanwhile waiting, um, let's open Q&A. Is there any questions? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, I can see that your CDK is actually very uh, developer friendly you can go for go for the organizer, but on what level the developer needs to understand AWS cloud and infrastructure in order to actually run all this? Right. So, um, so the question is, Okay, so, um, sorry, what was, was the question? Okay, the question is that the CDK is, I mean, it's really purely code. It's like it can be object-oriented from what I see. Mm. So, on what level the, the developer need to understand AWS in terms of, what, what right. you say, uh, the memory, the CPU, all the kind of things? Like uh, that's a really good question. So, um, so yes, it's developer-friendly. Um, and But I do think at at least when they start to creating the CDK application, they already know what are the services and also the minimum properties when they want to deploy or architect the application. So um, it's so m when I jump from um, console to AWS CDK, so this is this is my uh, learning stages. I learn what are the properties on AWS console, right? And then I try to read what are the properties equivalent in the CDK documentation, and then I just apply it on AWS CDK. So, um, so I, um, so my answer is that um, I think the developers need to know at minimum level uh, what are the properties or configuration they need or they want to deploy the architecture when they are developing AWS CDK. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Hey, this one is going to be hard, so please. CDK is really nice, but consider a scenario when you're working in a large organization and there is a lot of legacy stuff. Yep. Right? Yeah, so how can we deal with that? Like, we can really import fix into CDK, correct? Right. So, before this session, I actually list on all the possible questions. And that the question was not on my list. But, so, but I really appreciate the questions. Um, um, so apparently that, so may I ask you, have you implemented any kind of IAC before? Yes. Okay. So um, are you using Terraform? Yes. Cool. So uh, the good news is if you're using Terraform, um, you can also use AWS CDK. Why? Because with AWS CDK, we have an extension called CDKTF. Is a CDK for Terraform. So basically, it's it's do what you are uh, doing all the things that you uh, need on Terraform, and it could give you like a sin on SGL format. So, but yeah, but then again, that really depends on what kind of IAC that you have implemented before. So without any kind of configuration, in this case, like uh, using Terraform, uh, they need to manually or build the CDK application from scratch. Hope that helps. I, I hope for CDK frequency of the Oh, right? yeah. Thank you. No worries. Yes? One question. Uh, you, when it comes to CDK script, it looks like Python. The screen is just a regular Python. Sorry? Uh, when you demonstrate, okay, 
when you demonstrate the CD string that looks like a Python, is it red or Python or some subset of Python where it could say it is? Oh. Right, that's a really good question. This is a regular Python. And uh, what I did was I just implement the library available from uh, AWS CDK. So if I go here, this is all the libra libraries that I need. There are only two libraries, and I'm using CDK version 2. And if you are using CDK version 1, I really uh, recommend you to migrate to CDK version 2 because it's just make it a lot of things easier. Uh, you only need to uh, import two requirements, and then you can use all the uh, libraries inside the uh, using the Python or even another languages. So the question is that which uh, I can use the uh, AWS CDK using like uh, if statements and loops and all those flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, uh, basically what well, it CDK is just a library, and it accompanied with a CLI that you can use to run that application. So uh, the way it works is not it's not different with what what you usually code your application. You can use the library. You can. It also has. I'm using Tab Nine, uh, so it has a good auto completion, uh, and you can do whatever you usually do with the with your application. So you still need debug. It. I mean, you need to debug the infrastructure. Yes, you can also debug it. You can see. You can also do unit testing for your infrastructure. Uh, this doesn't sound good. Doesn't sound good. Okay. Sorry? This is not manifest. It's not templated. It's not templated, right? It's like you coding the infrastructure, but it leads you to a lot of issues. That's my main concern. I see. I see. Oh, well, what's your concern? The uh, what is the uh, issue? The main issue. Concern is you have inst instability. You have loops. It means uh, you can have infinity loops. You can have access to environment variable or even yep. web pages, whatever. It's again add you instability. So when you use regular language instead of declaration, you introduce all this instability and it like downgrade, not benefit from my point of view. That's why I'm trying to understand how you're dealing with all this. Instability which you introduce by using real during complete uh, programming language instead of declarative language. Right. Why do you need to do, or why you mentioned about the instability? That's something that I don't because get you it. Can. Oh. Because you're in complete language, you can. Right. And if you can, sooner or later you will do. Oh, I see. Because it's now it's much more flexible using AWS CDK compared to using declarative language like YAML or TOML. Right. right. So, um, I had never been there before. Um, so I think this is, there are pros and cons about using AWS CDK. Yep. Um, so the, 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 the advantage is that you can be more flexible on defining the architecture. Like when you want to define the, um, like want to define like a Fargate uh, containers using ALB, that's something that you need to do from scratch if you're using a declarative language. But with uh, AWS CDK, you can pack them as a library. And then you can share them with other teams uh, and then they can use that kind of stack right away. So obviously there's pros and cons. I do understand uh, where you're getting at, but uh, in my case, in my experience, it gives more flexibility and that kind of instability that you mentioned, I usually do it on unit testing. Mm -hmm. So uh, usually I do like a unit testing, like for example, if I want to have this AWS Lambda to return exactly 30 seconds, and I, if I wrongly define it as 60 seconds, it's gonna fail, it's not going to deploy. So that's something that probably could be a guardrails uh, whenever you use AWS CDK. But I'm happy to have a more discussion with you. Sure, sure. Thank you. Awesome. Yes. Uh, so how many questions? Like, 
Right. Yeah, that's a really good question, and that's something that we address on version two. So uh, I'm guessing you are still using version one. Oh, using Terraform. Okay. So uh, previously, when you uh, use Adobe CDK, the version one, you need to import them one by one on the requirements.txt or package.json. And with the version two, all you need to do is just to to define them here. And then you can use all the libraries directly in your uh, CDK application. So uh, this is something that I love with CDK version two. So uh, this is all about the versioning. You don't need to worry anymore about that. Right. OK, so um, I, are we running out of time? Uh, but before, uh, I think we have deployed the, uh, the CDK application. So I just want to show it to you here. This is the API pipelines, right? And it's still in go ongoing. But now, well, after this, it's going to create the uh, code pipeline. Now, something that I forgot to mention, that the powerful uh, CDK has the features called self-muted. So when you use, like in the past, if you use uh, CDK uh, to deploy, uh, to define the CI CD, what you need to have is that you have a stack to define your CI CD and another stack to define the application. Now, with CDK pipelines, it has a feature called self muted. So, whatever that you change on your architecture is going to self mutate the architecture itself. So, this is something that I found it really powerful that I didn't see anywhere else. And it is stated on update pipeline. So, once that is finished, is going to create another stage called production. It's going to create a manual approval before it goes to the production without me having to do CDK deploy. So imagine that, that you have that kind of like a flexibility and agility to define your architecture. You just push into your Git repository and it's going to update by itself. So yeah. Right. Uh, I see there's another question. Yes? Yes. So imagine you have the code now in some language, mm -hmm. and the guy who wrote it is uh, dead, is gone, and you want to change that code to the language of your previous. Is it possible, or you need to write it from the scratch? OK, so I tried that before. And it's n uh, the way it works is that with CDK, you can export them into CloudFormation. Right? And then when you want to continue the work, you can actually create, uh, import the cloud formation into your new CDK application. So it's not like changing the codes uh, exactly lines by lines. It's, it's the matter of like uh, importing cloud formations into your new CDK application. Good. But yes. So we a lot of things in the, uh, CDK. So why not use AWS Amplify instead of CDK? Are there any advantages over Amplify? Okay, so that is a really great question. Um, why don't we use AWS Amplify? Why do we use AWS CDK? So uh, AWS Amplify is another service and an open source framework and tools uh, from AWS for you who want to like abstract away the complexities by only using one CLI tool. So with AWS Amplify, you can create a web, you can create a mobile applications, and you can also uh, create a backend APIs and integration with machine learning as well. So it's really one powerful tool. Uh, but there are some cases that the Amplify doesn't cover all the AWS services. And with that, Amplify actually has an add-on called AWS CDK add-ons that you can easily uh, plug your CDK application into that folder and it's going to deploy the architecture or the system for you and it's going to refer back to your AWS Amplify application. So the, the answer is that not all services covered by AWS Amplify, but we uh, offer the flexibility by adding add-on for AWS CDK. Cool. Yes. 
Yes, oh yeah, sure. Sorry, can I hear? Cool. So I know with CD uh, with Terraform we have Terraform plan, and there's something that you want. Okay. So with CDK that you can actually do this, and it's going to show you the difference between this current state and uh, the previous state. Oh, hopefully it's running. Oh no, it's not yet. So this is the difference. This is all the things that I changed, which is not the desired state yet. So uh, it's not like an equal comparison or equivalent to a Terraform plan, but at least this gives you insight what did you change and how it's going to affect all the resources in your AWS account. Right, so, right, so, cool, okay, so, um, right, so um, lastly, um, I just want to let you know again that uh, all the content and materi materials for this, um, sorry. Uh, pop, 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 pop. It's available here at github.com AWS community ASEAN. And uh, you can get the speaker, uh, you can get PPT on the speaker deck and demo on GitHub. It's ready to use demo, it's ready to deploy. And if you have any other requests, just create uh, an issue and I'm going to create the content for you. All right, thank you so much everyone uh, and have a good night.